Hello everybody, Cub Fan here with a Sunday afternoon video and uh, I actually uh, just wanted to BS a little bit about the Hall of Fame and some things that are going on and I put on a little challenge for myself and I want to give you guys the, the results of that but uh, what I really wanted to talk about was the Hall of Fame voting that happened last weekend and um, I did a quick snub on that on one of my earlier videos and I believe the baseball writers absolutely got it right. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't too happy about Edgar getting snubbed, but I think Edgar is going to get in next year. And uh, Bonds and Clemens will eventually get in as well. Um, but Trevor Hoffman getting in was absolutely the right decision. Um, being stationed in San Diego for seven years, I got to see Trevor Hoffman pitch on a regular basis. And that dude was the real deal. I mean, he was just lights out closer. So I think the baseball writers um, absolutely got it right. And But what I really wanted to talk about with the Hall of Fame is, is I'm really stoked with what's happening here is that what's starting to happen is that all the guys that I grew up watching, even as a young adult, are starting to get into the Hall of Fame. And a lot of these guys got their start in the late 80s, early 90s, and some of these guys like Vlad, I mean, he didn't, his first rookie card was in 95, and so we're, we're starting to get rookie cards from the junk wax era, and that just pleases me to know. Hi everybody, Cup fan here! <laughs> That's the life. Um, <laughs> sorry, let me compose myself here. Um, but that, that just pleases me greatly because of, of how cheap the rookie cards are starting to get. And, and with me being, and I'm, I've touched base on this a, a hundred times in my videos, that I am a budget collector. And part of the reason why I am a budget collector is because um, from about 2002 to 2000. I want to say 2006, 2005, 2002 to 2005, um, I got real big in the shows, and I was doing two to three shows a month, and I was doing anything from hotel lobby shows to um, um, mall shows and things of that nature, and my collection was pretty big in those days. I had a very extensive because memorabilia, the men cards and the autograph cards, the bat cards, all those things were real big, real popular in those days. And I had a very extensive collection of that. I probably had over a hundred different men cards from anybody from Nolan Ryan to just Joe Nobody. And I had a pretty big PSA uh, collection as well too. And um, me being in the construction business when uh, the as my civilian job, but when the construction business bought them out in 08, we took a pretty big hit. We've recovered since then, but when the first thing was to go was my memorabilia and PSA collection just so we could uh, do what we had, do what we can to pay our bills. So that's something I decided I was never going to get back into uh, because I've limited my budget so much so that um, there is really no budget for a PSA collection or anything of that nature. So with all of these guys getting in now from the junk wax era, it posed a good question to me. It was like, how many Hall of Fame rookie cards could you buy on a budget? So I went to the LCS, and now my LCS is um, it's just a CS because it's not very local. It's about a 45 minute drive, and I gave myself a $20 budget. And um, and this is really hard at this CS because um, don't even bother looking in his showcases because he's very proud of the stuff he puts in his showcases. But what he does is he's got player boxes that he sets out. And so things that he doesn't put in his showcase, everything else is just the junk. So if you have patience and you have time to go through his boxes, that's where the bargains are. And and I don't... I don't been going here for 10 15 years and I don't think I've ever bought anything out of his showcase just because he's just 
he's priced out and he's not very negotiable on his stuff on his uh, showcases. But he he's got a great inventory. It's an unbelievable inventory. And so if you have time and you have patience to go through his bargain boxes, that's where you find the true bargains. So I was I set myself up. I said on a twenty dollar budget, what kind of Hall of Fame rookie cards could you buy? And the answer is about 10. I got 10 Hall of Fame rookie cards. And I challenged myself. I wasn't going to just buy like 20 88 Donruss Roberto Alomars. I would be cheating. So I tried to get different brands. And I tried to go back. And I was able to go back as far as 81. Um... And I tried to get all different guys. So I got 10 cards, and they're all different. And I spent $12.60. So, without further ado, the first one is so I got the 91 Upper Deck Jeff Bagwell. Uh, this guy was phenomenal in his playing career, just awesome. But a dollar. A dollar for a Hall of Fame rookie card, Jeff Bagwell. Next is a new inductee, Chipper Jones. Now I couldn't get his, uh, I couldn't touch his uh, 90 Bowman. Uh, I actually carried, or his 91 Bowman. I actually carried it around for a little while, uh, but I don't have this one, and I have the 91 Bowman. I carried it around for a while, and it didn't put me over budget, but this one was cheaper, and so. It was bargain hunting. I didn't have this one, but the 91 Upper Deck Chipper Jones. Beautiful card. And we got to go with the Big Hurt. And uh, actually, uh, I did uh, get him down on this one because there's a small ding in the corner here. Just a small ding, and he wanted two bucks for it. And I said, hey, come on, man. It's got a little ding in it. You can cut me a little slack on it. So I got this one for a buck. And once again, I've said it a thousand times, Hall of Fame rookie cards, if you can buy them for a buck, I pick them up all day long. There it is. And then we got uh, 89 Upper Deck, John Smoltz. Just a sharp card. Uh, I think it's highly undervalued, uh, especially with the 89 Upper Decks. That was the, like the first premium brand to come out. Um, Anytime I see these cards, it just it brings back a lot of nostalgia. But it was a great card. John Smoltz, 89 upper deck, for a dollar. And uh, sticking with the 89s, we got A9 Donruss, um, Randy Johnson. Uh, this is a little bit cheating because his 80, 89 is his rookie year, uh, but this is from Donruss Baseball's Best. Uh, so not technically a rookie card, but I think it's an XRC identifier. But 89 Donruss, Randy Johnson, a dollar. Hall of Famer, all day long. Back to the 89 Upper Deck, Craig Biggio. I think this card is super undervalued, along with his 88 score. And I already had his 88 score, and I carried his 88 score around a little while. But his 88 score put me under the $20 budget. Um, but it put me right at the top of it, and I didn't have the 89 upper deck. I had the 88 score already, so I was also looking out for my collection as well, too. So the 89 upper deck, Craig Biggio, Hall of Fame rookie card, 3000 Hit Club. 300 game winner, Tom Glavin. And this is um, 88 tops. Um, he's got better rookie cards. Uh, the 88 Fleer is a real sharp one. Uh, but I already owned the 88 Fleer, so once again, I was like uh, trying to buy them on a budget, but at the same time, I was hooking my collection up as well, too. So I got the 88 Tops, Tommy Glavin. Um, it's funny because I, I, was, I was going rummaging through the boxes, and I also I found <laughs> about three or four of the Fleer, a um, couple of the 88 scores, but I didn't have the Tops, and I was baffled by that. But sticking with 88, this is a... Robbie Alomar, this is his 88 tops traded, uh, very underrated uh, second baseman, um, he is a Hall of Famer, 
Um, but I think he, uh, he doesn't get the hobby love because of uh, his spitting incident. And I believe that was the 96 LCS where he spit on an umpire. Pretty gross. But uh, there he is. Hall of Famer nonetheless. Dollar for his rookie card. Can't beat it. All right. Now I'm gonna try, I tried to get a little bit older. And that was a little bit tougher. But I was able to pick up this Barry Larkin. And this was along the same lines as the Frank Thomas. He wanted a couple bucks for this one. Um, but I was able to get him down. It had some chipping on the corners because of the black borders. They're notorious for that. So, you know, I was able to get this for a buck as well, too. But the 87 Donners, Barry Larkin. I have the Fleer and I have the Tops, but I did not have that one. So there it is. That was number nine. And the last one... And this is the one that I paid more than a dollar for. I paid two bucks for this one. I already own this one. Uh, but you can't go wrong with owning more duplicates. I mean, he's a new Hall of Fame member. Timmy Raines. Love this card. 81 tops. And that was the oldest one I was able to pick up. But there you go. Ten Hall of Fame rookie cards. For 12 bucks, and that's with tax. So you can't beat it. Love the junk wax error. I love these cards uh, just because there's so much of it. But if you really look hard and you take time and patience, you can really find some gems. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope everybody enjoyed your weekend.